the Trayvon Martin story uh, continues to develop. And Sean Hannity had an interview with George Zimmerman, which I think is a horrible, horrible idea. But he had the interview nonetheless, and I think a lot of people expected it because just a few days ago we did a story about how Global Grind found that Sean Hannity was possibly thinking about paying for Zimmerman's legal defense, and now it becomes even more uh, plausible because of the fact that Zimmerman's doing an interview with him instead of anyone else in the media. Right, and, and we know that Zimmerman and Hannity had talked before, and look, it, you, it's a horrible idea for George Zimmerman's defense. Yes. But it's not a horrible idea for almost everyone else involved. Why? Because Sean Hannity's going to get good ratings. He doesn't care about George Zimmerman's defense ultimately. Like, he cares a lot more about his ratings, of course, right? And you would think, well, why are his lawyers doing it? But remember, they raise money after they get PR. And here is Fox News. They're going to do a softball interview where they're going to let him frame it any way that he wants. It's going to raise a lot more money, and where is that money going to go? It's going to go to his defense lawyers. The defense lawyers are going to get paid anywhere between one to two million dollars. They need that raise that money somehow. Now, if it hurts their client's defense later in court, well, golly gee, what could we do? But we got to get him out there to raise the money so he can pay us. That's keeping it real. Now let's power through some of the relevant parts of the interview. He talks about why he thought Trayvon Martin looked suspicious. What made you think he was suspicious and, and what made you think that he might be on drugs? I felt he was suspicious because it was raining. Um, he was in between houses, uh, cutting in between houses and uh, he was walking very leisurely for the weather. Um, I didn't, it didn't look like he was a resident that went to check their mail and got caught in the rain and was hurrying back home. Uh, he didn't look like a fitness fanatic that would train in the rain. Okay, that's amazing. So, number one, I thought he was suspicious because it was raining. Okay, all right. <laughs> number two, he was walking leisurely, but wait a minute, if he was walking fast, you might think like he's trying to run because, you know, he's doing something fishy. So if he's walking leisurely, he's guilty. If he's running, he's guilty. Cutting through lawns, I've done that many times. Okay, maybe you can chalk that up as something slightly suspicious. He wasn't going to get his mail. He went to go get Skittles in an Arizona iced tea. No, this is the, and then he didn't look like he was that fit. But then you also have said in previous uh, cases that, well, you know, he looked like a big guy and I was worried for, uh, for my life, etc. So which one is it? The small details in, you know, the things that he's sa he said in the past c continue to change, right? Because the word leisure leisurely really stood out to me because in the past he talked about how he was like going through houses and it looked like he was looking into houses. Someone who is walking leisurely through a neighborhood is probably not thinking about robbing or burglarizing a home. Yeah, it, this is a horrible defense so far. Now, in the next uh, video, uh, he talks about uh, how Trayvon wasn't running out of fear in retrospect. Remember, he said that uh, Trayvon Martin was running and he was going after him to try to figure out where he was going, but he kind of changes the story a little bit in this next clip. Uh, this is video number 10. Is there any chance in retrospect, as you look back on that night and what happened, and the nation obviously is paying a lot of attention to this? Yes, sir trying to maybe get into the mindset because we also have learned that that Trayvon was speaking with his girlfriend supposedly at the time that maybe he was afraid of you didn't know who you were no you don't think that why do you think that he was running then um well, I, I'm, maybe I said running but he was more you said he's running yes uh, it was like skipping and going oh. away quickly mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't running out of fear you could tell the difference? He wasn't running. He wasn't, so he wasn't actually running. No, sir. He wasn't running. He was just skipping. No, no. Look, this is horrible. Oh, this is going to, like, I thought he was going to get off. And it, look, the whole point was, let's bring some justice here. Let's, this guy should be arrested. And then you have a trial. You leave it up to them. And of course, we're going to leave it up to the jury and stuff. But he's not helping himself at all here. I thought he was skipping. What the hell does that mean? What, was he skipping leisurely? Okay, what the hell are you talking about? And the reason he's saying this is because if it appears that he is the aggressor chasing after Trayvon and Trayvon's trying to run away from him, well then that looks bad because then it's hard to argue self-defense when you're the guy chasing after the poor guy. So he says instead, no, 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 don't worry, he was leisurely skipping around and then decided to skip around and punch me in the nose as he's about to get to in a second. And by the way, I loved Sean Handy's there, I thought it was perfectly symbolic. 
hey, rem remember, George, the whole nation is paying attention. So give us the right answer, okay? One that helps you, one that doesn't hurt you. Okay, go ahead, George. That's what I'm referring to when I say that he is uh, leading the discussion in a way. You know, it, and it, it's clear. Anyone who pays attention to the way he's questioning Zimmerman can see that he's on Zimmerman's side. Of course. Yeah. How do you think he got the interview? Of course. Now, um, Sean Hannity has uh, George Zimmerman recount exactly what happened when the altercation occurred. And in this next clip, George Zimmerman talks about how the fight started. Let's watch. You did not continue pursuing him. When did you next see Trayvon Martin? Less than 30 seconds. Okay. Where, where, where exactly were you at that point? And how far away from, were you from your car at that, at that moment? Uh, I guess about a hundred feet or more. So you never went further than how far approximately from your car? I'd estimate it to be approximately a hundred feet. So you never went further than that from the car? No sir. Okay. And so at that point, Trayvon is, all of a sudden you turned around and there he was? Yes sir. What happened next? Uh, <laughs> he asked me what my problem was. Um, Exploit a problem. Yes, sir. And uh, I was wearing a rain jacket, and I had put my cell phone in my jacket pocket as opposed to my jeans pocket where I normally keep it. And I immediately went to grab my phone to this time call 911 instead of the non emergency. And when I reached into my pants pocket, because that's where I keep it out of habit, um, it wasn't there, and I was shocked. I looked up. And he punched me and broke my nose. One shot. That's yes, one. So he said to you, you have expletive, you have a problem. Those are the exact words you used. You remember it? Do you have a problem? What's your problem? What's your problem? And you said to him, I don't have a problem. Yes, sir. You reached for your phone. I reached for it as I was saying, no, I don't have a problem. And at that point, you just got hit? He was already within arm's length from me. And that was that the punch in the nose that broke your nose? Yes, sir. Right there, and you went immediately down to the ground? I don't remember if I went immediately to the ground or if he pushed me to the ground, but I ended up on the ground. All right, this is exactly what Anna's talking about by saying leading the witness. Remember, right, he punched you really hard, right? And, and he was right there. He turned, when you turned around, he was there staring at you. I mean, we got it, Sean. We got it. And you want to help his defense. We got it. He kept emphasizing the expletive uh, when Trayvon Martin allegedly told him, what's your problem? So George Zimmerman said, okay, he told me, what's your problem? And Sean Hannity is like, expletive, what's your problem? Like, he jumped right. in. Right. Like, said, remember, Trayvon, the kid that you shot and killed, is the guilty one here. Let's just remember that. And by the way, even if his version of the story is true, he's reaching for his phone, he says. Now, he also has a gun. So how does Trayvon know that he's reaching for his phone but not his gun? Okay, so now if you thought somebody who's got a gun is reaching for something, you might punch him too, even if you believe Zimmerman's story, which I don't. Before, I was more mad at the cops for checking you know, Trayvon's toxicology report and criminal background, et cetera, and not checking Zimmerman's. Mm -hmm. Seemed like it was an injustice. Now I'm starting to get really, really mad at Zimmerman here, because this is just nonsense. He was skipping leisurely and, oh, poor me, golly gee, I was never away from my car, and the next thing you know, I get attacked by this guy, as if, like, this was all Trayvon's fault. Uh, in clip 15, uh, Zimmerman starts talking about how he was getting beaten up, and Trayvon Martin told him that he was going to kill him. Because you said you feared for your life. At what moment do you remember when you literally, do you remember when you thought, I may die? Is that, because you said that you felt you feared for your life. Do you remember the exact moment when you felt that? Uh, in hindsight, I would say when he was slamming my head into the concrete and I thought I'd lose consciousness. Was he talking to you a lot during this fight, during this when he was beating you, because you're saying he's beating you and pounding your head into the cement. Was he talking to you during that time? Yes. And he was saying? Cursing, telling me to shut up, um, and then finally telling me he was going to kill me. And he said those words. He, Hannity asked three times in that short clip, uh, you feared for your life, uh, he was going to kill you, he said you were going to die, right? 
repeating it for the audience over and over again, this is the victim, this is the victim, and then apparently he has to keep leading him because this kid's a moron and can't say it on his own, right? Like, come on, at least do a semblance of a fair interview where you challenge him on one thing, something, anything, instead of trying to help his defense in every case, right? And then Zimmerman's like, oh yeah, 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 in hindsight, mm -hmm. in hindsight I remembered that I was afraid for my life as he was banging my head against the concrete. If any of this is true, and of course, why does he say that? Because that helps his self-defense claim tremendously. I thought at any moment I could die. That's why I shot him. In fact, uh, the discussion goes from him being beaten up to him being suffocated. Let's watch the next clip. What happened after that? I felt him take, uh, he, he had, uh, after he couldn't uh, hit my head on the concrete anymore, um, he started to try to suffocate me. Um, and I continued to take, push his hands off of my mouth and my nose, particularly because it was excruciating, having a broken nose and him putting his weight on it. Uh, and that's the point in time when he started telling me to shut up, shut up, shut up. Uh, and Why I, did he tell you to shut up? I don't know. Yeah, because Trayvon went out to go get the Skittles and the Arizona t iced tea just in case he would happen to run into a guy he doesn't know and find three different ways to kill him. Uh, bang his head against the concrete if that doesn't work, suffocate Who? Why would you try to suffocate someone that you got into a random fight with? Like even if you thought, hey look, I gotta incapacitate this guy so he doesn't do harm to me, suffocating him? That sounds like you're trying to intentionally kill him as if you know him. That doesn't make any sense. And the whole story doesn't make any sense to me because it goes from, you know, George Zimmerman pursuing this kid that's, that's walking leisurely and skipping or whatever. And, and it goes from Trayvon Martin minding his own business to all of a sudden being like this crazy, vicious guy who wants to kill someone. It doesn't make any sense. And at that moment, you're totally right, Jake. You're reaching for your cell phone allegedly, right? How does he know that you're not reaching for a gun? Right? And, and this whole thing, the thing is, as soon as Trayvon Martin asks you, what's your problem? Why do you reach for anything? You just say, you know what? I don't have a problem and walk away. But he decided not to do that. Yes. Uh, and why did you pursue him in the first place? Because you thought you were, you know, they, as everybody says, even the FBI says, he had a hero complex. Mm -hmm. And so if he sees a suspicious guy because it's raining, and he, that's why he thought he was suspicious because he was walking leisurely, well then, you know, you got to go pursue him. So but none of this is his fault, it's obvious. Now at one point, uh, Zimmerman starts reaching for his gun and he explains to Sh uh, Sean Hannity why he did that. Do you remember when you yourself reached for your weapon? Do you remember that moment? Yes, sir. Tell us about that. Um, at that point, um, I realized that it wasn't my gun, it wasn't his gun. It was the gun. Did, did he oh. say anything? Because you said he was talking a lot about the gun. Did he say he noticed the gun? He said, you're in a die tonight. And uh, took one hand off of my mouth. And I felt it going down my chest towards my belt and my holster. And that's when I, I didn't have any more time. It was the gun. It wasn't his gun. It was the gun. Yeah. This is a horrible, horrible idea for his defense. It really is. All right, so first of all, who in America thinks he came up with that line? Obviously, his defense team came up with that line and make it seem as if, look, uh, there was nothing I could do for the 88th time in this interview. I'm telling you, I thought I was going to die. The whole time, he has the gun. It's not the gun. It's his gun in his possession as he chased down that guy. And then he says, well, it's as if there's a gun floating in the air. And he's like, oh, look, there's a gun. Like it's a video game or something, and it floats there. And he grabbed it, and he's like, what could I do? I thought this murdering, leisurely murderer was going to kill me by suffocating me, so I had to use the gun. Oh, come on. If you didn't, if you were neutral about Zimmerman before, it's hard not to hate him after this interview, because none of these answers sound remotely true. And it sounds like he's blaming the victim over and over and over again. Never lose sight of the fact that he's the one that shot the unarmed kid in the chest. Now, when he did shoot the unarmed kid in the chest, uh, Zimmerman claims that he didn't even realize he had shot him. Let's watch the next oh, clip. Oh, great. Yeah, this is great. Well, there was one report or a police report that actually said you didn't know after you fired. You didn't think you thought you missed? Yeah, I didn't think I hit him, yes. Yeah. Did you know that Trayvon, when did you know that Trayvon had died? 
when I went, uh, probably about an hour after I got to the police station. After the shooting, did you, and you saw that he was laying there, and obviously injured, you, there was a moment where you realized that he was shot. Um, like I said, he sat up and he said something to the effect of, you got it or you got me. Um, I assumed he meant, okay, you got the gun, I didn't get it, I'm not going to fight anymore. Um, at which point, I got out from under him. Well, what's the point of this? It's like, he was so innocent and the gun was so, uh, you know, n not a weapon that he wasn't even sure that he had shot. What's the point of this? Here, I got news for you. You shot him and you killed him. Okay, we all already know that. Just, this is sickening. Now, the interview concludes with uh, George Zimmerman saying that he actually does not have any regrets that night. Uh, he feels like it was something that was probably God's plan. Okay, this is the most repulsive. Person. Is there anything you regret? Do you regret getting out of the car to follow Trayvon that night? No, sir. Do you regret that you, you had a gun that night? No, sir. Do you feel you wouldn't be here for this interview if you didn't have that gun? No, sir. I, I, you feel you would not be here? I feel that it was all God's plan, and for me to second guess it or judge it. Um, is there anything you might do differently in retrospect now that time has passed a little bit? No, sir. All right, if I was on the jury and I just, that's the only thing I heard, I'd be thinking the whole time. You don't regret that you went out that night and an innocent kid got shot in the chest? What kind of person are you? Can you at least say, hey, I wish I'd stayed home, man. If I knew this was going to happen, I would have just, you know, watched the game or something. You don't regret that you followed him? You don't regret that you brought a gun? And then Hannity again leading with, well, maybe you wouldn't have been here. Like Trayvon would have killed you if you didn't have a gun. You wouldn't have chased after the kid if you didn't have a gun. You're an obvious coward of the worst degree, right? So you think you would have had the guts to chase after anybody if you didn't have the gun? No, because you thought, ah, I got a gun. I could use this. I can kill somebody with this if I need to, right? You wouldn't have, but you don't regret having the gun? You don't re regret firing the gun? You don't regret killing the kid? And then you're going to tell me it was God's plan? As Trayvon's family said, yeah, that's not my God. My God didn't want my son murdered that night, okay? And why does he say it, by the way? Because he's appealing to the Fox News yes, audience. Oh, I am so religious. He I, knows what he's doing. He knows what the demographic is. He wants sympathy from the audience. He wants more funding for his legal defense. So what does he do? He uses God. He uses religion. He does that to kind of touch their hearts and get them on his side. I mean, I'm sure most Fox viewers are already on his side anyway. Yeah, because when Trayvon went that night, went out, he thought, all right, let me go grab some Skittles and iced tea and then go suffocate some random guy I ran into. Right. Okay, and you know what? If it, the hang, banging his head on the ground didn't work, I'll try to suffocate him. Oh, man, thank God there was a gun so that they could foil Trayvon Martin's plan to get chased down by George Zimmerman and then grab a floating gun after he was skipping leisurely. Come on, this is the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. Now after he says that, he uh, decides maybe it's a good idea to uh, apologize to Trayvon Martin's family. I would tell them that again, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have, my wife and I don't have any children. I have nephews that I love more than life. I love them more than myself. And I know when they were born, it was a different, unique, bond and love that I have with them and I love my children even though they aren't born yet oh, and oh. I am sorry oh. that they buried oh. their child I can't imagine what it must feel like and I pray for them daily oh stop with the praying man Jeez. this is I oh I thought I was gonna throw up there with the children I don't have and this whole thing about family man and oh my god he's sitting there praying all day maybe you should have been at home praying instead of walking around like a gangster oh I got a gun I'm gonna chase people down I'm so cool etc before you went and shot that poor kid you know who's not gonna have kids Trayvon Martin because you shot him in the chest man look I, I was angry at the cops before I had questions about Zimmerman's nonsense thing about oh Trayvon's on t it was you know right on top of me I shot him like this and I didn't get any blood on me that I mean there was a million problems with the case to begin with yeah. but when you hear him say the nonsense it makes you personally dislike him and want to rule against him so if this is their defense have at it Hoss because I now think 
you know what? He might be found guilty after all.